Hello, in this work you'll learn about the diffusion through selectively permeable membranes. Diffusion is a passive substance transport phenomenon from a region of high concentration to another of lower concentration, tending to equalize the concentrations in the two regions. Diffusion is spontaneous and runs faster as temperature increases. According to Fick's first law, the substance transport is directly proportional to the concentration gradient, which is the thermodynamic force that generates the diffusion process. The concentration gradient is a vector, oriented towards the area of higher concentration. Surface transport by diffusion leads to a decrease of the concentration gradient. The proportionality coefficient between the substance transport and the concentration gradient is called diffusion coefficient. This coefficient describes the ease of movement for an atomic or molecular species in a medium. Diffusion coefficient depends on the size of the moving particles, the solvent's viscosity and on temperature. Diffusion phenomenon can also take place through membranes. The membranes that selectively allow the transport of some molecular or atomic species are called selectively permeable membranes. Permeability is a physical quantity that characterizes membranes. It depends on the diffusion coefficient of a permeated molecule or atomic species and on the thickness of the membrane. Permeability has the dimension of a speed. Gas and liquid diffusion is observed everywhere throughout the living tissues. As examples, in the human body, diffusion is critical in the gas exchange in the lungs. Also, in the chemical synapses, Neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine are transported through the synaptic cleft via diffusion. One medical application based on the diffusion phenomenon is the extrarenal dialysis. This relies on the diffusion of small molecules, mainly urea, through dialysis membranes. These membranes are selectively permeable and separate patient's blood from the dialysis solution, the latter having a similar chemical composition with the blood plasma. Thus, the patient's blood is purified from excess catabolites. In this practical work, relying on several electrical conductance measurements, you will calculate the permeability of a selectively permeable membrane. For this, you will be using a conductometer equipped with a measuring electrode, a magnetic steerer, a container equipped with a selectively permeable membrane, two Berzelius glasses, magnets, magnetic bar, a chronometer, two graded cylinders, distilled water, saline solution of one molar concentration, and paper tissues. For starting, rinse well with distilled water, the measuring electrode, the container equipped with the membrane, and the two Berzelius glasses. Connect the conductometer and the magnetic steerer to the power outlet. Use the following steps to calibrate the conductometer. Set the measuring range button to the 1000 millisiemens position. Place the measuring electrode in air. Press and hold down the button on the back panel of the conductometer. While pressed, rotate the calibration button until the indicator overlaps with the red triangle mark on the display. Release the button on the back panel. The indicator should move back to its initial position. In the first part of this experiment, you will measure the electrical conductance of water and that of saline solution. Using the appropriate graded cylinder, fill 30 ml of distilled water in the container equipped with a selectively permeable membrane. Rinse well the white magnet and place it in the same container. Using the other graded cylinder, Fill the measuring Berzelius glass with 120 ml of saline solution. Add the magnet inside and place the glass on the magnetic steerer. Turn on the steering and dip the electrode into the saline solution. Follow these steps to measure the electrical conductance of this solution. Select the corresponding measuring range by rotating the range button counterclockwise. Continue to rotate until the indicator value exceeds the measuring scale shown on display. Go back one step on the range button. In this way, you find the range of maximum precision 
to measure the electrical conductance of this particular solution. If the measuring range starts with digit 1, you will read the conductance on the upper scale, whose maximum value will be 1, 10, 100 or 1000. If the measuring range starts with digit 3, you will read the conductance on the lower scale, the maximum value being either 3, 30 or 300. For example, in this case, if the measuring range would be 100 millisiemens, the value of electrical conductance would be 35 millisiemens. Instead, if the measuring range would be 30 microsiemens, at the same position of the indicator, we would read a conductance value of 11.5 microsiemens. Read the conductance of saline solution and record the value in the table. Attention! Record all values in millisiemens. If necessary, convert the values from microsiemens to millisiemens. Set the range button back to the 1000 millisiemens range, lift the electrode and remove the beaker from the magnetic stirrer support. Rinse well the measuring electrode with distilled water. Repeat the rinsing several times. Move the distilled water filled container over the magnetic stirrer. Dip the electrode in and, following previously described steps, measure the electrical conductance of distilled water. Record the obtained value in the table. Set the 1000 millisiemens measuring range and lift the electrode in air. Remove the container equipped with the membrane and place on the magnetic stirrer the beaker containing the saline solution. In the second part of the experiment, you will put the two solutions in contact through the selectively permeable membrane. Using conductometry, you will observe the diffusion of ions from the saline solution through the membrane into the distilled water fill container. In order to determine membrane's permeability, you will measure the time evolution of the electrical conductance of the solution in the container equipped with the membrane. Use the lab chronometer to measure the diffusion time. Reset the displayed value by pressing the two upper buttons at the same time. The same two buttons are used to set the values required for this experiment, which is 30 minutes. The chronometer works only in countdown mode and can be started using the large button. Dip the internal container inside the saline solution. Tilt the internal container in order to avoid formation of air bubbles under the selectively permeable membrane. Start the chronometer as soon as the membrane touches the saline solution. Attention! After putting the two solutions in contact, by looking from the above, check if there are some air bubbles still trapped beneath the membrane. If you find air bubbles, remove them by gently shaking the internal container. Dip the measuring electrode inside the internal container and search for the appropriate measuring domain. You will observe that the electrical conductance in this container is continuously increasing. This is due to the diffusion of sodium and chlorine ions tending to equalize the ions concentrations in the two containers. After exactly two minutes since the chronometer was started, read the conductance in the internal container and record its value in the table. Repeat the reading every two minutes, for 30 minutes, and record the obtained values in the table. Attention! As the electrical conductance of the solution in the internal container continuously increases, at some points you will have to change the conductometer's measurement range in order to be able to read the correct values. When the experiment is finished, cast away the two solutions and rinse well with distilled water the recipients, the measuring electrode and the magnets. In order to protect the electrode on the membrane, before leaving the laboratory, fill the two containers with distilled water, put them in contact and dip the electrode into the internal container. Calculate the equilibrium conductance using the given formula. Calculate the variation of electrical conductance in respect to the value recorded at the time zero. Represent graphically this variation as a function of time. Parameter A is the slope of the plot. Using it, calculate the value of parameter tau 
which is the theoretical time required for the concentration to be equalized in the two containers. Attention! Express the value of parameter A in millisiemens per second, not in millisiemens per minute. Finally, calculate the permeability of the selectively permeable membrane for the passing of sodium and chlorine ions using the given formula.